This is the Solving Radical Equations tutorial. Any radical equation that has a radicand composed of a variable or some variable that is raised to a fractional exponent is a radical equation. So down below here what we have is a variable that is raised to a fractional exponent. So there are rules in dealing with radical equations. The typical order of operations for these problems is to 1, position the radical so that it's on one side of the equation. So in our case, that's position the variable that's raised to a fractional exponent. Because anything raised to the 1 half power is the same as saying taking the square root of that. So square root of x plus 5. Because the denominator of the fractional exponent becomes the index of the root and the numerator is the power that everything under the root is raised to. And in this case, when it's raised to 1, we don't have to do anything because anything raised to the 1 power is itself. So that radical x plus 5 is equal to 4 in our case. So step 2 in these problems is to raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power of that radical expression. So ours was originally raised to the 1 half power. So what we would want to do is raise that whole expression to the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. We'd like to square this equation. And anything we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. So we'd square the other side. And we'd get x plus 5 on the left, because the radical is canceled out by the square root, or excuse me, the square. And we'd get 16 on the right-hand side. So then we'd just subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, and we'd get x is equal to 11. Now the last step here is to check for any extraneous solutions. In our case there are none, but we may go over some in the future here that will have extraneous solutions, and I'll show you what to do in those cases. Let's work on some practice problems. I've gone ahead and left the order of operations in here for you while we work on these. So let's start with the first problem here on the left. 2 times the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 6. Now step one is to get the radical expression on its own on one side of the equation. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides of the equation. And we're going to get the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 3. Now we want to multiply both sides or raise them to the reciprocal power of that radical expression. So I'm going to square these sides because originally the left side was raised to the one-half power which is the square root. So the square root and the square are going to cancel out and we'll have x plus 3 on the left hand side is equal to 3 squared on the right which is 9. We'll subtract 3 from both sides of the equation and we'll have x on the left is equal to 6 and there are no extraneous solutions for this problem. So for the next problem, the first thing we want to do again is to get the radical by itself. So I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides of the equation. And we're going to have x plus 2 to the 3 fourths power is equal to 6. Now another way of saying x plus 2 to the 3 fourths power is to say the fourth root of x plus 2 cubed, and that's still equal to 6. Now that's a lot of work, x plus 2 cubed. What it works out to, to be is the fourth root of x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8, all underneath the radical, is equal to 6. However, you shouldn't go that direction with this problem. It's easier to just leave it in simplified form, which would be to just subtract the 6 over here, so minus 6 from both sides, and set the problem equal to 0. So you could simply write it as the fourth root of x plus 2 cubed minus 6 is equal to 0, and you could then solve it as a quadratic. I would leave it as this in its simplified form. Lastly, let's take a look at the problem here on the right. The first thing we want to do with this problem here is to add 3x to both sides of the equation. And we're going to get 
the square root of 6x plus 4 is equal to 3x. Now we want to get rid of that square root, so I'm going to square both sides. That'll cancel out the square root on the left, and we'll be left with 6x plus 4. And on the right, 3x squared is 9x squared. Now we want to subtract 6x and subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. So what we'll get on the left hand side is 0, and on the right we'll get 9x squared minus 6x minus 4. Now you can see that it's set equal to 0, so that suggests that you should be using the quadratic function to solve this. And if you do, you'll get two values for x. You'll get x is equal to one-third times one minus the square root of five, and x is also equal to one-third times one plus the square root of five. Now we arrived at both these answers using the quadratic formula, but I'd suggest you could also use completing the square method to solve for the two values of x. Most radical equations that you're going to see are going to be slightly easier than these last two, so don't be discouraged if they seem a little difficult. I just wanted you to see how difficult some of these could be. And they can all be solved just sticking to the order of operations that we have here.